Thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieved baby teeth and a young smile. Be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. So the outline I'm going to do as a freehand drawing. So I just put a centre mark on my reference image there and put one on the board there. It's a six inch by four inch study. So from the centre point I'm using imaginary angles to get the overall shape. Uh, doing big shapes to start with and, and get smaller and smaller. So I'm using a 708 Carbothello grey pencil there using the pencil as an horizontal plane as well just to check the alignment from the corner of the mouth to the other corner of the mouth and see how it lies and basically it's just a little bit of a guesswork really just to get these uh, teeth in and then you just reshape it as, as you measure one object against the other so what you do is see it as just shapes rather than naming it teeth and mouth and lips just keep your vision wide and so you're comparing one shape and angle against another angle and just slowly but surely it'll come together and I'm using that Faber-Castell kneadable eraser to actually mould the shape so you can put a mark down and then just change it up and then put a mark down again. Keeping things nice and basic these are the colours I'll be using for the underdrawing great combination is the warm red, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre, white and also the green to desaturate. What I tend to do is ghost the image by using the Faber-Castell kneadable eraser and start using the white. Now the purpose of the underdrawing is to reshape the outline and to create a sort of basic form. So what I'm doing here is just getting the light areas in so light pressure where it's mid-tones more pressure where it's highlights it's all about getting the pigment down there just enough so the next stage will glide more as well so it's easier to apply uh, just adding cold red here for the lips area um, sort of elysium crimson type color and then for the shadows I'm using dark green and that cold red which really creates a depth to the actual picture Sometimes I'm using a combination of warm red and cold red together for the gums here. And you've just got to play to see what works really. Uh, nothing set in stone. And again, just going through dark green with a little touch of red for those sort of dark areas. And then just basically just reshaping everything, just making sure everything is in the correct place for when I start putting the richer colours on. This underdrawing, I'm not concerned with getting the colours or the values correct. It's all about getting everything sort of drawn correctly and in the correct position. So, but you can have a play and see what combinations might work. So it's a chance just to be loose and free flowing. So I enjoy this sort of stage because I can just let go and just be quite spontaneous. What you see me doing here is just mapping out these lines in the sort of lips and just creating like a road map really to follow for when I get these richer colours on. Every stage I do makes the next stage easier so it's, it keeps everything nice and relaxed you see so you relax with this so when you're doing the next stage you relax because all this has been worked out beforehand so everything is free flowing then as you progress or you don't get tunnel vision and get taxing. Just to clarify what I mean by richer colours, it just means more pigment because I like to do things light to start with because I can easily change them, you see. And then, because I'm developing this road map of shapes, it makes it easier then. So when I do put those richer colours in or more pigment, I don't have to move it around so much, so it's, it's easier. I find if you add too much pigment too soon, it's, it sort of gets a bit too sort of unworkable and it's hard to sort of get those subtleties. Now for this area I'm using a combination of warm and cold red 
then just warm it up with a bit of yellow ochre and then add that sort of olive green or the dark green to desaturate it. For this study I'm experimenting a little really because I'm putting a bit more cold red in the skin tone than I normally do. So normally it's warm red with blue to, to create a colder red. So for this one I'm just experimenting um, just to see how it sort of developed. You always have to keep changing and trying different things because all skin tones are slightly different. It depends what reflected light's on there as well. So I just thought it might need the sort of cold red, but in retrospect, I wish I'd have gone for the warm red and blue, but there you go. <laughs> you just have to try these things. If you enjoy this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now here's a selection of Karen Dash pencils I tend to use for flesh tones. And there's three there I use for lips, which I'm just going to show you now. Uh, it's like a light purple. One's called Portrait Pink, and the other one's like a, a colder, pinky colour. So you use whatever you've got in the kit, and the rest of them uh, are these what I normally use. I like to use the Faber-Castell White as well, it's nice and fresh. And I'm just holding the pencils in a bunch in my hand, my left hand, because I'm right-handed just to, so I can just keep picking them out when I need them. Starting off then with the white, so we're getting the lightest area in. So I'm using the Faber-Castell here because it's fresher and it'll be more vibrant. And then just glazing over with blue in some areas and then orange in other areas. Because uh, usually I use blue and orange for the teeth and a little bit of red here and there. So I'm going for the extremes now, so I'm putting the dark areas in done the light areas now the dark areas just it's the rich color stage but it's still a block in so i'm not putting the details in that will be later on in this video so all i'm doing is laying in these colors now here i'm just laying over the purple color over the red i put in uh, just mixing it in with it now if you haven't got that you know you can just use red and a bit of uh, ultramarine blue and it'll be a similar sort of thing it'll create a purple but what i tend to do is use these colors that are similar and then change it up. Now for the gums here I'm using different reds with that purpley colour as well. And then what I'll do is add a little bit of lemon yellow because it's got a little bit of a glow to it. Whatever's got chroma always add a little bit of lemon yellow. It seems to do the trick. It seems to bring it out and glow more. At this point in the study I decided to concentrate a little bit more on the skin tone just so it gives me an idea then of the sort of colour saturation for the lips and the teeth. So I spent a bit of time just sort of getting things together, just roughing it in, just putting it in loosely. And again, I'll go through later on with the detail of the skin tone. Uh, but it's just a matter of getting all these colours and values. So what I'm looking at is the value, the chroma and the temperature at this point. If you would like to know more on how I do create skin tone shadows, or in fact shadows for anything, whether it's landscape, pets, wildlife, I have got a free class for you. The link is in the description below, so you're welcome to it. Uh, so if you want to check that out after the video, it's there for you. What I tend to use to desaturate the red is the green, which is the complementary colour. And here I'm using a cotton bud to just smooth over this sort of grain a little bit then go over again creating this texture going over with white then glazing over going over with white glazing over and I keep doing that until it's a finished product really but you have to be careful not to go too much with the white all you're doing is every layer you're actually tinting it and but then you're going over with another color tinting it going over with another color tinting it here I'm doing shadow work so I'm using, again, the green and the red together, a little bit of yellow ochre just to warm it up. And some, some areas need blue as well. If it's more purpley colour, um, you tend to put a little bit of blue there. But in this instance, I'd use the cold red, trying that out for this study. Using little squiggles and, and movements with the white to create the skin tone texture, because it's not smooth, it's not like plastic. And then when you glaze over then, it, it creates another layer, and that's how I do it. Now 
Now I've done a bit of the skin tone, now back to the lips again. So using the Faber Castell because it's fresher, so the lightest areas I'm putting that in. And then I'm just really going through it, just trying to get that sort of colour right and the balance and then just altering the teeth as I go along. So forever sort of correcting things and uh, moving things around. But it's a case of just keep, like I said, just like the skin tone, just putting that white down, glazing over, white down, glazing over, until you get the desired effect you're looking for. And I'm just changing it up with different colours, you know, I'm trying the different pinks out. But um, just using the Faber-Castell just for freshness and some blue to make it purple as well in places. Just like to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons for all their wonderful support every month if you're considering joining me on patreon and would like the benefit of longer slower and more in-depth videos most of the videos i'm putting on there now are all in real time audio and video so you can see me and hear me as i progress moment to moment now the link is in the description below if you want to check out that for more details now sometimes I use the Carbothello white because it's more chalkier and it's nice to blend so you can blend with it as well as you know tinting. So I use the different whites for different things. Now I'm using the yellow ochre to warm things up as well and it's basically just keep going over it and over it until it starts to shape up really. Just saying a little bit more about how I approach the energy of the subject. So what I do is let go of the mind, open the heart, so allow that energy of the subject to come into you. And you do that by sending this open heart feeling to the reference image and you'd be surprised how much energy comes back then. And then you just focus on recreating that energy and just let the movements just happen rather than trying to draw every little detail you see all you're doing is is actually drawing energy and feeling now to subtle everything up now into the detail stage so what i do now is still keep open i don't get tunnel vision and look at details really minutely i'm still letting it flow but i'm more focused on getting the shapes right now and putting a little bit more finesse in there getting that sort of brightness in there the feeling of the shadows i'm using a color shaper which is a really good tool to have for these little fine details just dab with it though don't stroke it or it'll take the pigment off so it's just a little dab here and there just moving the pigment from one place to another if you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends. It would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. Now for the really bright areas of the teeth, I'm using the Rembrandt White here. It's really rich in pigment, so it really stands out. But you have to be careful not to make it too white because teeth aren't pure white really. They, they are a bit of a sort of orangey colour, orangey bluey colour and white. Um, so I'm just being careful not to make them too white but then just put a lob in a little bit of pigment with the stick because it's very hard to find that edge but then move it around with the Faber-Castell pencil so what I do is add that pigment with the stick move it around For the detail stage I'm looking at the chroma, the value and also the edges so some areas are sort of lost edge so you, they sort of merge into or melt into the colour side of it or some are really sharp and some are blurred so you've got soft edge, sharp edge, lost edge so what you're doing is just sort of being aware of that as well as getting the shadows to feel right so you're looking at the values so what you can do is squint your eyes to see the values open your eyes to see the colour so you're going backwards and forwards really with that idea it's all about getting everything to feel one so you've not got like loads of detail in the teeth and loads in the nose in different areas everything sort of feels a, a oneness to it uh, and the energy feels one so you you're constantly going from one area to the other 
and balancing how it feels. So what I tend to do, if it doesn't feel right, it needs attention. I like to look into a mirror a lot as well at this stage, just making sure that it all feels like I mentioned that oneness. By looking in a mirror, you're seeing it at a different angle. You're seeing a, a flip image, if you like, and it brings out imperfections. So you, that's a good way of doing it. A lot of people take it into another room as well. You can take your, your study into another room and have a look at it and have a minute. And also uh, you can take a photograph on your mobile phone, see how it looks on that and see if you get any feelings that needs changing. So there's all these little tricks you can do just to get that sort of overall look to feel right. I mean, my feelings with this study is that I should have really focused more on putting the warmer red in and adding the blue to create that sort of cold red. Um, but I used the cold red instead. And in retrospect, I think it would have been better to do what I normally do. But you have to keep trying these different things. That's why I've left it as it is. So, so you could see that I'm always experimenting, always trying different things. You can't get stuck in the mud and, and just have one way of doing it. You always got to be open to change and that keeps everything nice and fresh then. I mean, when I do another one, I'll, I'll remember this and then I won't put that as much cold in, you know, cold red. But I could change this, I could put a bit of green in there and make it more of a grey colour than go in with a warmer red. But I thought I'd just leave it in here just so you could see, you know, the difference. Thank you so much for watching the video right till the end. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. It means so much to me that as this would help the channel to grow. If there's any questions at all, please leave a message in the comment section below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But in the meantime, if you want to see more and more, please check out this video here. Take care. Bye for now.